Hi, my name is Matthew Mercer. I'm the voice of the character Hit in Dragon Ball Super. I mean, the thing is, there's like some fun trivia elements of Hit that maybe the audience doesn't know, like the outfit that he wears, the coat actually has a, a purpose with his abilities and technique. It, it does contain an element of his power. Before I was cast in this, I was very aware of Dragon Ball. I actually, uh, it was one of the first anime I got into when I was very young. Like, there were other projects I was, before I even knew what anime was that were that style, like uh, Unico, Kimba the White Lion, things that were, I was very young. But Dragon Ball was specifically the first anime I ever watched. And I actually watched it, this is like 1994, I think, in Japanese with Korean subtitles. And my best friend Ian Cho at the time, would translate for me after we watched an episode. Like, that was so cool, what happened? And he'd tell me. So I got really into it then, and then when the English dub first started coming out on television, it was like, finally, I can understand at my own pace. So uh, I got heavily into Dragon Ball. I used to draw a bunch of the characters, you know, Goku, Vegeta, you know, Brawly, all those characters, uh, Majin Buu. I was really into the series back then. It's been kind of wild and a huge nerd, kind of full circle for me to be able to, to step into this universe after growing up with it. I'd worked on a lot of projects adjacent to, to Chris Abbott and had worked with a lot of people that had so many great things about their experience working on Dragon Ball. And uh, I was always like, oh, that's so cool, man, you know, for one day. And I'd done some events and some conventions with Chris and got to know him well, and this character hit came up. And so he called me and was like, hey, uh, I don't know if you're ever interested, but I'd like to have you read for this if, if you have any inkling. And I was like, i send it my way. Uh, if it's a character, it seems like I can, you know, get in my, my range and, and ballpark. Uh, I'd, I'd love to work with you and, uh, you know, be a part of this. And so when I read up and began to research the character, I was like, this is just too cool of a character. And I did my best reads for it and just kind of like any audition, sent it out into the ether and went, please, you know, come back to me. And uh, lucky enough, it did. And so it, it's been a really huge honor to be able to work with, with Chris and uh, to work with the, the Dragon Ball Z team. It's definitely in the gray area when it comes to morality and the classic hero-villain spectrum. He is a tool to be used by whoever can pay what's necessary to send him on a job. You know, like any assassin, he doesn't feel for the right or the wrong, he just will do whatever job has been asked of him. So that's a cool place to play with. It kind of lends well to that anti-hero, almost vigilante aspect of it, but without a specific moral code, or at least none yet. Who knows if we'll explore that in the future. And I think his budding dueling and rivalry with Goku may explore that further down the road. I, I really enjoy the fact that he's this very mysterious, almost universally feared or unknown figure who each time he does appear, everyone's still kind of watching him unveil more elements of his hidden ability. And it's very much like an interesting match, uh, like a mirror type scenario to the classic Goku that we've seen through the series. It was just been leveling up and finding new ways to break the boundaries of his power level and what new abilities he can acquire and then, and then mix and, and you know transform. It's kind of fun to bring a character into the story that can actually put some fear into Goku's heart. That's uh, it's a very rare thing in this world where Goku's so sure of himself and essentially is like, oh, <laughs> I've been killed how many times? I'm fine. And then to have a character like Hit show up at the scene with that kind of air of, of power and, and unknown capability and unknown intent to really make this kind of cocksure, you know, brush it off the shoulder hero really kind of wonder if he can win and will he survive. I think that's a, that's a cool part to play. not truly a villain character or an antagonist per se. He's just a powerful force that uses his power for whoever the highest bidder is. And you can see within him there is a sense of kind of honor and respect for those that can stand up to him. He definitely builds that relationship with Goku through their, uh, their, their bouts. But I like the fact that he's, he understands himself and how powerful he is to the point where he's reserved with his use of it and is spending more of the time toying with his prey seeing where they can take him, and then eventually, if he needs to, he'll pull his hands out of his pockets and really show him what he can do. And even in this, this first foray with Goku, they were both still kind of figuring out how much further they each can go. And so the, the second conflict they have, that gets to escalate even further. So for, for Hit, he stands out to me because he's almost torn between the job that he's used to doing 
and this kind of brotherhood he's building with Goku in the midst of this, and when it brings them to blows for a second time, specifically to kill him, there's almost like a sense of shame to the idea that like, now I have to kill this guy who's kind of cool and really gives me a run for my money. And so I think that was, that was a cool dynamic to play with. As far as my preference to play, whether it be heroes or villains, uh, it's more to the character than the, the position. I mean, villains are delicious. You know, you get to really kind of uh, dive into darker undertones and uh, a spectrum of, from maniacal to calculating. And Hit definitely hits a few of those notes. But I, I can't say I prefer one over the other because, I mean, heroic characters also inspire those that are watching and, and enjoying these stories to, to want to, to be heroic, you know, to show that there is, there is a purpose and a reason to, to rise against any sort of uh, uniform darkness in the world. I think both parts are important and I enjoy them both for different reasons. For me, being a person that's loved Dragon Ball for as long as I have, one scene that really stood out to me just for personal reasoning is when Goku does his first major charge up and his like, classic Dragon Ball scream, the ah, you know, that, that's such an iconic element of the show. And then hit seeing this in Goku thinks maybe, hmm, maybe there's something to this. Is, this. is this where he gets his power? And then replicates it. And so for me to be able to jump into the Dragon Ball universe and do my own Goku charge up, you know, Saiyan scream, that was, that was pretty cool. That was, that was a special little nerd beat for me that I think I'll hold on to for quite some time. I will say, for as intense and high energy as the Dragon Ball franchise is, I feel very, very fortunate that my character, for the most part, is super low key. Of all the characters, he just doesn't, he yells the one time, and that's about it. Everything else is very much down here, very subdued, very calculating and cold and curious. But he doesn't get super shouty like everyone else does practically in the series. I'm, I'm very thankful that I didn't have to go through the terrible throat ripping Dragon Ball experience that I've heard so much about for an extended period of time. Uh, so that, that's definitely a unique factor from, from my entry into the, the series. My favorite part about the 71-72 uh, the arc is previously it was a contest. It was, it was Goku and Hit fighting for different sides and it was very gladiatorial. This is a much more personal story. This was a direct, I'm sent here not to defeat you, but to kill you. And one, the mystery of who managed to, to mysteriously hire this assassin to kill Goku and why, eventually revealed to be Goku himself just to test it out, just to be, you know, in a very Goku way. I want to see how powerful this guy is and see if he can take me out. And if not, I'll get better. You know, it's a, it's a, cla it's a classic, you know, Goku move. So I really liked the dynamic that it brought to a more personal element. And you got to see both of them constantly challenge each other. And they build even more of this rapport now that they're not, you know, under this constant watch of these, these you know, god beings that are, they're, you know, betting on this whole, this tournament. Uh, now it's just the two of them beating the crap out of each other and trying to learn while one-upping each other once again, over and over. And by the end of it, the fact that they build this rapport, this kind of more, even more mutual respect than the tournament brought about, um, it's cool to watch them kind of step away and be like, hey, I think you're all right. I'm still gonna kill you, but you're pretty cool. You know, it's, it's a dynamic you don't see done often, let alone done well, so uh, I really enjoyed it. I'd definitely like to see Hit and Goku come to blows again. I would like to see them challenge each other even further and elevate what their you know, power sets are. It seems each time they battle, Hit unveils another facet of his capabilities or has learned something from the last encounter and adjusted that with his current capabilities to be even more dangerous. So on one hand, I really want to see what ceiling there really is for, for what Hit's capable of. And two, I'd like to see that rivalry, that friendly rivalry grow even further. But I really want to see, possibly, is them fight side by side, because imagine if they're this frightening and this powerful when they fight each other, I mean, what can't they accomplish if they decide to go, hey, let's uh, let's fight that thing. So I'd like to think at some point in the series they have the opportunity to fight together and possibly just utterly destroy whatever's in their way.
if I could choose my own team for the Tournament of Powers, like like 10 slots, just to give it some some weirdness, to mix it up a little, and, and, and because I feel like they need a little more time in the spotlight, it would be Yamcha, eight android clones of Yamcha, and then Hercule slash Mr. Satan on the end. And it would be glorious, and it would be wiped out immediately. But man, would it be a fun, like, five seconds. I'll go with that. Since getting involved in this, I've had some great experiences meeting fans of the franchise and fans of the character. People have been very welcoming. You know, there's always that fear when you take in uh, a character and, uh, and voice them for a project. You know, will, will they like what I bring to the table? You know, you, the internet can be a very fickle place sometimes, but everyone's been very kind, very welcoming, and I've had a lot of uh, fans I've met at conventions and different events that have come up and said like, I love what you do with Hit. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad. You know, oh my God, your Dragon Ball shirt's awesome. You know, and we'll just kind of mutually nerd out. It's been really cool. It's, it's been a really, really positive experience. And uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that people seem to be appreciative of, of what I brought to the character. And I hope to continue to, uh, to make them proud. For me, being able to, to be a part of this, to, to play a character like Hit, to be part of the Dragon Ball universe has been a huge honor. And uh, I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to work with these great people, to be part of such a cool storyline and work across from characters that, that have been important to me since I was very young. Uh, and I'm very thankful for everyone who's been so supportive of this series and these characters for as long or longer than I have even, and been so accepting to allow me into this family, both on the production side and the community, the fans. It's, it's been a very uh, warm, exciting experience and uh, I've, I look forward to the possibility of more down the road.